Mark the cable at the appropriate length from the end, according to the application procedure. Use the Dremel to score the outer layer of the cable at the marked location. Using a pie tape, measure the outer diameter of the cable and install the proper range grommet. From the cable's end, remove the outer strand layer and break off strands at the scored mark. Mark the next layer of strands at the first scored mark of the cable. Slide two hose clamps to approximately 20 inches from the marked location and lightly tighten. Cut tape and unravel the outer layer of strand back to the hose clamp location. Be careful not to deform outer strands. PLP tip. Wedge a flathead screwdriver between the unraveled strands to secure them out of the way. Unravel the stainless steel buffer tube back to the hose clamp location. Mark the center member at the original cut location. Mark each stainless steel buffer tube one and a half inches away from the original cut location towards the cut end. Use the buffer tube straightening tool to straighten the buffer tubes from the outer marked location. Mark the central strength member two and a quarter inches from the original marked cut location. Then mark the central member one inch outside of the original marked cut location. Very lightly score the center member at the one inch marked location. Place one full wrap of green sealant on either side of the two and one quarter inch marked location. Take the black heat shrink tube and cut one inch pieces for each stainless steel buffer tube strand. Slide each heat shrink tube just past the outer mark on each stainless steel buffer tube. Apply heat to shrink until taut on each tube.
Use the stainless steel tube cutter to score each buffer tube at the outer marked location. Note: Be careful not to cut through the stainless steel buffer tube. Slide each clear frication tube onto each buffer tube until covering the heat shrink tubes. Individually wrap each stainless steel buffer tube back onto the center member and space evenly around the green sealant. Once all of the buffer tubes are wrapped around the green sealant, make sure you can see sealant between each strand and secure it in place with tape or zip ties. Knead the sealant around the strands to create an even, smooth surface. Be sure that there are no bare spots when you can see the tubes through the sealant. Wrap another single lap layer of green sealant over top the first layer in the same location. Rewrap the outer layer over the sealant. Be sure to space rods evenly around the sealant. PLP tip. Rewrapping the outer layer in subsets will allow for easier reinstallation. Place one hose clamp on either side of the green sealant on the outer layer. Alternating back and forth, evenly tighten the hose clamps down until the outer layer is completely seated. Confirm that the green sealant is in between each strand of the outer layer. Repeat the kneading process to create a smooth, even surface. Adjust hose clamps so they're approximately one inch away from either end of the sealant. Place one half lap layer of vinyl tape over top the sealant being sure not to pull too taut as it wraps over the sealant. Remove hose clamps and slide grommet over the center of the sealant.
break central strength member at scored location. Use provided colored stickers to mark each buffer tube appropriately. Break stainless steel buffer tubes at previously scored location and discard. Clean fibers per your company's practice. Remove the transition tray cover. Loosen the bolt on the CRB keeper and remove designated end cap. Clip out tabs using side cutters. Evenly apply silicone grease to the outside of the grommet. Place grommet in designated port and evenly tighten down the end cap using a can wrench. Using a torque wrench, tighten down the keeper on the OPGW cable to 25 foot-pounds of torque. Secure the L bracket to the inside of the end plate. Then secure the OPGW cable to the bracket using a hose clamp. Repeat this process for all additional cables. Secure furcation tubes in the transition tray by lightly tightening zip ties. Prepping the LG STS 72 splice tray. Remove tray from packaging. Remove the clear cover. Each tray comes with an application procedure that shows proper use and routing recommendations. Insert yellow light grip splice blocks into the center channels, leaving an empty port in the center. Insert the orange and blue open channel retention blocks in the outer slots of the splice tray. Residual contents can be stored in the splice tray until ready to use. Reinstall the transition tray cover. Remove splice tray cover and place tray directly over the transition tray. Remove the retention blocks and route transition tubes into the tray. Wrap the provided blue felt around the transition tube to create a snug fit in the light grip retention block. Repeat the process for both sides and store fiber for splicing. 
Place the retention block over the felt and insert into the tray ensuring the open channel is facing down. Store fibers in the splice tray for future splicing. Repeat this process for each transition tube. Reinstall splice tray cover. Once all trays are installed, secure them down with the Velcro strap. Install outer storage channel retainer clips. Using a can wrench, tighten down all remaining end caps. Apply an even layer of silicone grease to all sides of the dome gasket. Install the gasket on the dome end plate. Ensure the gasket is properly seated in the channel. Insert the organizer assembly into the Coyote dome. Install the Coyote end plate collar and secure the latch. Using a torque wrench, confirm the 3 8 inch bolts on the CRB keepers are tightened to 25 foot-pounds. To install additional CRB keepers, Remove the keeper bolt and insert the base clamp assembly into the provided slot. Secure the base assembly to the grounding stud using a can wrench. Reinstall the keeper bolt and tighten down for future OPGW cable installation.